Aloha and welcome. I'm Peter Rossig. I'm your host uh, for the Hawaii's Volunteer Champions, a program here on thinktechhawaii.com where we talk to volunteers and find out why in the world they give up their two most valuable resources, their time and their effort, to help some cause or other. And we find out a little bit about some of the causes that they're willing to work for. So today we're going to be talking about a government agency, actually, but uh, one that depends on volunteers to do its job. Uh, and that's the Diamond Head Interpretive Program. And with us uh, are Cassandra Springer, who is the uh, program manager, and a volunteer, Abigail Burke. And let me go right to you, Abigail, and ask you, um, why in the world do you give up your time and your, your uh, which is valuable, and your effort to, to do this kind of work? I just think it's very rewarding. I get to go to Diamond Head. And first of all, the view's beautiful. I love being able to hike up there. It's a gorgeous view. And talking and engaging with the public and being able to give them that little like aha moment and teaching them something about a place that they're just visiting for the first time and they don't know that much about, it's, I think it's very rewarding. And what is it, uh, tell us a little bit more about what you do uh, for the Diamond Head Interpretive Program. So I will hike along the trail and basically just be a resource for any visitors and hikers and they can ask me questions, ask me for help or guidance for the trail and yeah, pretty much. You speak Japanese? I do not. <laughs> I bet you get a lot of Japanese visitors, though, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> so what happens if you get a Japanese visitor and they're, they're they need something? What do you What do you do? Um, I have used like Google Translate before to try and help as much as I can, or they usually have like the physical map with them, and I can kind of point to where they are on the trail or where they're headed or which a direction to point them in. All right, that's terrific. So, how often do you do this? So how many how many hours a week or a month do you devote to this? I'm there about one day a week, and it's uh, three hours that I'm there. So that's pretty. That's kind of manageable, I guess. Uh, but I, you know, I, you're out in the sun. You're uh, that's kind of a wearing, uh, you know, tiring thing. You, you're still up for it, though. Oh yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, I assume you've got a cool T-shirt or something that you get to wear while you're out there, or a sign or something that lets people know you're the you're the one. I do. I actually have it right here. I can show you. So I guess they'll find you. All right. That's terrific. All right. Uh, and uh, that's and how did you happen to find this? How did you just how did you decide to do this kind of stuff? Well, I'm a student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And um, one day I got an email from our college forwarding an email from Cassandra that said that this program was a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about one of Hawaii's great natural resources and just something for me to do to kind of get out there, get a little bit more experience in the work field that I'm kind of looking towards. And I emailed Cassandra and here I am, basically. Here you are. Terrific. What are you studying at UH? I'm studying natural resources and environmental management. So you are in the right uh, place then, aren't you? Because you're exactly. you're getting some experience uh, in DLNR. Cassandra, uh, I had frankly not heard about this program. I guess I haven't been in Diamond Head uh, Crater. I drive by all the time. I haven't been inside since, can I say, since the Diamond Head Crater Festival. No, I think I've been there since then. But um, tell us about this program and tell us what's going on with it. So this is my docent program. I created it um, about two years ago, and it was I did it because there's a, a definite need for more people on the trail that can interpret the resources, both historical, cultural, natural resources on the trail, and in general, just give a also be like a cheerleader and advocate for people to hike up the trail because sometimes it can be really hard, and um, I realize I can't be the only one that. Um, does this trail, I, I need more support. So I created this volunteer program or my docent program to help me get a bigger footprint on the trail physically and, you know, everything. And um, it just, I ended up tapping into the student resources at UH Manoa. And right now I have about maybe a dozen volunteers. My oldest one is 76. 
my youngest one is probably a sophomore in college. So um, it's been a real help. And I think the volunteers really enjoy it. And the visitors definitely enjoy it. They can definitely, you know, they have their name tags. They have Hawaii State Parks on their shirt. And um, I think it's a really good resource for even the students to get that hands-on experience and engaging with people and uh, interpreting the resources to the visitors because we get people from all over the world to come visit Diamond Head as an iconic monument. Do you have a number of how many people visit Diamond Head in a year, or, uh, roughly speaking? About a million. We get a 3,000 people a day, and wow. that roughly translates to about a million a year. Amazing. And you created this program on your own, uh, out of the out of nothing. Is that what you tell me? Uh, a little bit. I used to volunteer at the Waikiki Aquarium as a um, what do they call it? Um, I, I used to be at the touch tank where edge, you edge, edge, of, the, edge of the reef, edge of the yeah, reef. The, the edge of the reef. So I, you know, I have the the collector urchins and the hermit crabs, and try to engage with people about the little critters and teach them a little bit more about that. So kind of that was my spark or aha moment of like, oh, this is really cool. People are actually learning this. And then I went into live feeds and um, cleaning the tanks and it went a little bit deeper, but their volunteer program was, I think, really successful. And I mirrored their program to my program, but they were, I think, a little bit more successful because they have over a hundred volunteers. Well, they, they've been at it for a little bit longer than you have, too. Yeah. Have a, I have been a volunteer at the Waikiki Aquarium. As a matter of fact, uh, Chester Campos, who's been on this uh, this program be, uh, earlier, uh, was the one who recommended that I, I talk to you, because uh, as I said, I really, really hadn't heard of it. And I will tell you a quick story. Uh, back many years ago, I was uh, very interested in, in fish and in Hanama Bay. Uh, so I talked to some people and I said, we really need a Friends of Hanama Bay group, you know, for very much the same reason as you. Uh, I thought the museums have docents and, uh, you know, all these other organizations have volunteers, but nobody was doing that for Hanama Bay at that time. And this was long before the present structures were built. And so with some other people who were interested and who'd seen that need, we organized the Friends of Hanama Bay, which is still a, a going concern and I think still giving tours and, and helping people around Hanama Bay. So uh, clearly these kinds of places where uh, hundreds of thousands or a million visitors a year come need a little more than, uh, you know, just uh, what, what the government agencies that are responsible for them can do for them, right? Right. So that's terrific. And were you doing all this stuff at the aquarium while you were working for DLNR or before, or where was where did that fit into things? Uh, so I have about 400 hours of volunteer work under my belt at the aquarium that I did for a few years because I was very avid volunteer there. And um, I, I think I had a really great experience, but I also um, ended up working for them about for about six months in the live feeds department. And then, um, and then I was also working for DLNR at the same time, but I had to choose one. So I chose DLNR because the benefits are really good. And, um, I couldn't, you know, I kind of do two jobs at once. Um, they, they kind of wouldn't let me. So, um, after COVID and everything, I was like, oh, I really need help. Um, so I, I created this program mirrored from the Waikiki Aquarium. Um, but I have another program that helps um, remove invasive species and try to restore the native ecosystem here at Diamond Head. And we have that every first Saturday of the month. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a minute. I, I, I just uh, wanted to uh, ask Abigail uh, a little bit more about, um, so do you, when you tell your friends uh, uh, about what you're doing, do they say, are you crazy or do they say, how do I sign up? I've actually gotten a mix of both. I've had some people, some of my friends interested in doing this because they didn't even know it existed as well. But um, I had some friends and especially people on the trail when they ask like, oh, you work here. And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm a volunteer here. And they're like, oh, you're crazy for doing this. It's so hot and you're not getting paid. It's like, it's crazy. And but yeah. Okay, so so you get get a little bit of of each kind there. That's interesting. And uh, 
Do you have any really memorable moments that you think back on when you felt you really helped somebody or somebody was, uh, I, I imagine some people get into trouble uh, occasionally on that trail. Uh, so do you have any stories that you can tell us about when you had a really memorable moment as a volunteer? Um, I don't know about just like one particular story, but there's just so many instances of people just not knowing anything about, like just coming to Diamond Head and not knowing anything about it and just asking like, hi, hey, what am I looking at? <laughs> and being able to build like their knowledge of Diamond Head from the ground up, basically. And then I can just see like a look on their face that they're leaving and they're like, wow, I actually learned something today. And I kind of just feel good about them walking away from the park then learning something. That's terrific. And how did you learn all about the things that you're telling them? Is there, was there a course or uh, they, they, did uh, did Cassandra hand you a book and say, here, memorize this? Or how, how did that work out? Um, mostly Cassandra gave us like a document to kind of study. Uh, and then also just talking with her the first few times I was there. And also as I keep going on, I, I even learn new things all the time. And I just can ask her whenever I have a question. All right. So, Cassandra, you're out at the, the at the uh, Diamond Head most of the time or all the time? Uh, five days a week, um, okay. unless I'm requested to help out somewhere else. Okay. And uh, you put this training together. You, know, you created the program, so I'm guessing you put this uh, training together. Again, I, you know, you had a good model in the Waikiki Aquarium, which has got a lot of stuff, and they've been doing volunteers for forever. Uh, and have a very strong program, but you put together the training for uh, your volunteers. Is that right? Yes, um, I have a comprehensive guide that has um, links and um, bird sounds and different plants to learn, as well as um, uh, ways to interpret the resources. Because it's it's not just outdoor education. You're you're trying to, like Abigail said, build on a foundation and try to get people to an aha moment of a better understanding than when they arrived. And with 3000 people a day, that's a lot of people, but I think we reach a small portion, but even the small portion can spread the word of, you know, Diamond Head's not a volcano, it's a vent. And these are the reasons, but it's, I built it from the ground up because there was definitely a need and people similar to Abigail kind of want to be park rangers or something in that field. And this is a kind of a way to get that foot in the door, or at least the the experience to get that foot in the door. All right. So uh, I just think I learned something. Diamond Head Crater, I thought it was a volcano. <laughs> no, it's, it's a vent. So um, we have a two volcano theory and a three volcano theory. If, if you want me to go on about this, I will. Um, the first I'll volcano. I'll give you two minutes. How's that? Okay, I can do, I can do this in two minutes. I got this. Um, so the three volcano theory is and a point is actually the first one, which is now underwater. The second volcano is the Waianais, which are about 3.7 million years old. And all of these are shield volcanoes. The third volcano is the Ko'olaus. But as you see from Nu'uanu Pali lookout, that you can see the, the center of the caldera and the one side of that volcano fell into the ocean. And so the Ko'olaus are about 2.4 million years old. It went dormant after a minute or after a while, about a million years. And then it had a rejuvenation period, which caused all these vents to pop up, um, basically like um, pressure valves. And there was about 30 or 40 of them, including Punchbowl, Salt Lake, Red Hill, Diamond Head, Hanama Bay, and Cocoa Head. Okay. So so just so I, I always thought it was the, the crust moving over the hot spot. So that, that, that's how the coat allows and the Waianais were made. But not how Diamond Head was made. No. So during the rejuvenation period of the coat allows, it caused all these vents to pop up. Diamond Head only formed within a few days to a week. Oh. There was no lava. It was just like a cough. Interesting. And Hanama Bay, my favorite, is that another cough? Yep. Just another vent, but one side of it fell into the ocean. Yeah. 
which is the only reason we have a bay after all. Wow. Okay. So I'm 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 learning stuff all the time here. That's great. So let's talk about well, first of all, you say you've got about a dozen people who are doing this sort of thing. If you could just uh you know hire or conjure up a bunch more, how many how many volunteers would be the right number of volunteers to do this program for you? So I have four shifts throughout the day. I have the six to nine, nine to 12, 12 to three and three to six. So if I can have at least three, two to three per shift, I'd say like 12 to 15 people per day. Just and so we can have cover, just so we can have coverage on the trail and engage with people because being up on the trail for three hours is kind of a, kind of a lot. And um, is there any kind of uh, like, is there like a formalized tour a day or is there anything uh, that, you know, you is there a sign there that says be here at two o'clock for your docent tour or anything like uh, that? No, because we don't have enough people to do that. Um, right now, I'm just working specifically with school groups on that kind of stuff. So it's it's scheduled per quarter. Um, but for docent tour groups, I would definitely have to bolster my numbers a lot more. Yeah, you'd probably have to do some more research or prepare some more material. So that's is that a, a, a goal you have in mind or is that too far off in the future? I would love that. <laughs> if people want to volunteer or get involved, how do they do that? Uh, they can uh, visit our Diamond Head, or sorry, not Diamond Head, our volunteer website on uh, the dealinourhawaii.gov website. And um, there's a long-term volunteer form, and then there's a short, uh, then there's um, contacting our Oahu interpretive, interpretive specialist, um, and then he will forward the information to me, because um, we have a variety of programs throughout the island, but um, just going through our volunteer website will get you in touch with me. Okay. Just very quickly, what are some of the other volunteer opportunities? Because I'm learning everything for the first time here. What other DLNR, what other things do you have going on that I might get involved in if I don't want to spend three hours in the hot sun? <laughs> well, for, for Diamond Head specifically, we have one every first Saturday of the month. So we do have one coming up on September 2nd. Uh, it's from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. where we remove invasive bellyache, which is from, I believe, South America. And it's a bush that we remove. It's really fun to remove. And then um, we sprinkle native seeds throughout the soil that we've just disturbed um, in order to help restore the native uh, seed bank. And then for out for throughout the island of Oahu, um, I recommend contacting my colleague Kay Kai Mar, where he has events um, at Sand Island, um, Kaivi Coast, Kaena Point, and I think those are the main ones he works on. Okay, that gives us at least a sample of the people who might be interested in other places or might want to do more, uh, have a place to go. We'll come back. I, I want to ask you more about the invasive species uh, in a minute, but I want to have, ask Abigail a, a question. And that is, um, if you could change anything about the program, if you could, uh, you know, make a, maybe you've made a suggestion and we'll pretend uh, Cassandra won't listen for a minute here if you want to complain about something, but uh, not too bad. But uh, how, is there anything you would change? Is there anything you would do differently? Are you perfectly happy with the way things are going? I don't know. I think right now I'm perfectly happy with it. Okay. Nothing you would suggest. No improvements. Come on, you're you're yeah, a you're a student at UH. You've got to have a plan for something to do better. Oh, I uh, I don't know. My mind's blank. All right, I'm sorry to put you on the spot that way, uh, but uh, you, the enthusiasm you're bringing to this is really um, you're pretty remarkable. I think many people look at at you know. Many old futs like me look at students today and think, oh, they're, they're just lazy and they want to spend their all their time. I mean, when do you do your social media? When do you when do you when do you get on on, uh, you know, TikTok with your friends if you're out there in the sun? Uh, all right. I'm, I'm kidding. That's that's not fair. All right. <laughs> Cassandra, tell me um, a little bit more about this invasive species uh, program. Uh, so I started it when I began back in 2009, 2019. Um, I realized there was this, this is from a previous program from the previous Park Tech, 
where she started this program of removing invasive bellyache. And like I said, it's from South America. I'm not entirely sure how, why it was brought here. And it's not really known to be anywhere else but Diamond Head. But so far in the last four years, four, five years, uh, we've removed about five acres. And I have a lot more volunteers for that program. I get upwards to 60 people per month for that one event. Um, Just to make sure that I heard you right, it's called bellyache? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jatropha gossiphoria. Well, I'll, I'll call it Detrofa Cotton uh, Be- I guess I would guess bellyache because if you eat it, you get sick. It's either that, but there's also antidotes that I've read where if you treat it correctly, it's medicinal. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Medicine, any medicine, if you did take it in the right doses are good. And if you take too much of it, it's, it's bad. My, right. my high school biology teacher always said, anything you put in your body is bad for you. Uh, even food, if you take too much of it. So that's very interesting. And you've cleared how many acres now? About four or five acres. Okay. And that is what part of the total estimated acreage would you guess? Uh, well, we have about 475 acres of the whole park. So. And it's all over everywhere? Point zero zero five. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing math in your head. It makes me nervous. Um, <laughs> But you're saying it's all over everywhere. This 475 acres of is is got belly I, ache all over it. I've put a significant dent in the massive grove that I saw that I saw when I first started, because I get up to 60 people per month for this one event, and they decimate acres. And wow. um, every year, I I end up removing about either an acre or a little bit more each year. So it's, I think it's been very successful. And sometimes when I go out and look for bellyache, I'm like, oh man, I don't think I'm, I'm going to have enough bellyache for this, this coming up volunteer work day. And then lo and behold, they clear more bellyache. I find more bellyache. <laughs> right. That's Ab- uh, Abigail, you don't want to go out and clear Abigail, clear bellyache. You, you'd rather hear the belly aching of the people talking on, walking on the trail. I did do it once. And it was very fun to pull out. It was. Is this like is this like bend over labor? Is this uh, like picking cotton or or I've never I don't know what a belly ache even looks like. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Cassandra, but it's like a little shrub basically, and it's it comes out really smoothly. It's pretty fun. Okay. Wow. You know, Abigail, your idea of fun and my idea of fun. They're not quite the same, but I really admire what you're doing here. So, uh, Cassandra, this means you're, this will probably show after, this program will probably be available after the September 2nd date. But mm-hmm. just to be clear, every first Saturday of the month, yes, nine, nine o'clock, mm-hmm. uh, do people need to register or do they need to, um, do they just show up at, uh, and where do they show up? Or how does, if I really, you know, if I'm overcome uh, somehow and feel lightheaded and want to go out and pick Billy <laughs> for a few hours, how do I do that? Uh, you can either visit 808 Cleanups on the app or you can visit Kanu Hawaii. Those are my two volunteer platforms. Uh, you can email me directly. And then um, I provide gloves and ice water for volunteers. Um, if you and then I recommend volunteers bring uh, wear closed toed shoes, clothes they don't mind getting dirty, and um, you know um, head covering. I would think would be a, a strong sense of wanting to get some work done. <laughs> right, uh, that, you know there that I just think it'd be great to be able to come to back home and say I've just cleared an acre of belly ache, but. Uh, <laughs> Who knows? So, Abigail, you know, a lot of organizations take uh, a really good care of their volunteers. Uh, They give them a lot of stuff, you know, they give them a lot of logo wear and they put on events and everything like that for them. Uh, Is Cassandra doing anything like that for you? Well, I got the cool T-shirt like I showed you earlier and the name tag, but um, it's really just so much fun to hang out with her and everyone else at the park and no cool logo wear, but an awesome time. (laughs) 
Oh, that's great to hear. I'm nothing wrong with people who uh, volunteer to, you know, go to the parties and everything like that. But people who volunteer just for the pure joy of it, uh, that's that's got to be uh, a little bit unusual. So um, how did you get interested in this subject that you're now pursuing in school? Uh, what what brought you to this this point? Well, just growing up, I always had like an appreciation for the outdoors and nature in general. And uh, when I was starting to look at colleges, I found UH Manoa and I really fell in love with the program, the NREM program here. And I applied, I came here and it's just, my appreciation for nature has just like skyrocketed since I've come here and studied. Terrific. And where are you in school? Uh, junior, sophomore? What's your prognosis for graduation? I actually just started my senior year, so I'm looking to graduate this spring. Okay. And then what would you graduate school or are you going to uh, try to get Cassandra's job away from her? What's the plan for after that? Well, if Cassandra's job opens up, maybe, but I'm looking at graduate school right now. Okay, that's good. Stick, get that over with. That's that's my advice. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Cassandra, kind of the same question to you. A lot of volunteer organizations will really, uh, you know, pour on the goodies and the events and all kinds of stuff for their uh, their volunteers. But you you seem to be able to get people to do this just for the pure love of doing it. Now, how does that happen? I'm lucky. <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, I initially, my volunteers who, before the docent program, if you did 20 hours, you'd get a free shirt. Um, now I have stickers. Sometimes I'll have water bottles. Um, I would like to treat my volunteers to like meals, but I'm on a very strict budget. So that's kind of out there. But um, Working with the state, there's a lot of red tape, and I would like to shower my volunteers with stuff, like the Waikiki Aquarium does with their their spring events and everything, but it's just not quite in the budget right now. Well, it's something to look forward to. I mean, the, the aquarium does an excellent job of bringing in a lot of people and, and you know, giving them some, they're not, most people I don't think do it for the for the rewards, but the rewards are, are sort of icing on the cake. And I'm I'm sure, you know, I hope that someday you get to the point that you can give a little, give Abigail a little icing on that, on that cake. Um, well, you know, this has been totally interesting to me. I, di I didn't know about the program to begin with, so I've learned a lot. And I now know that Diamond Head is not a volcanic crater, it's a vent. <laughs> so it, this, this has been great. Let me give you each a, a, a minute or two to say something, uh, you know, to encourage people to join up or uh, whatever you like. And, and uh, we'll, we'll thank you for your time and for all the work you do out at uh, Diamond Head. Uh, Cassandra, let's start with you. Volunteering gives you a great sense of um, self and, and place. And um, that in itself is a really good reward. And um, I mean, that's how I honestly got started. So um, volunteering, I just makes you feel better. It gives you the good, happy hormones. So go out and find your place. I hear you there. Thank you. And Abigail, what would you say um, to people who might kind of be thinking about doing this kind of thing? I would say that it really does give you those happy hormones. It makes me feel so much better. And especially for students like me, um, spending a day in class, you know, staring at a screen and then being able to go to Diamond Head and go look at the beautiful ocean, the beautiful views and talk to people, get those happy hormones. It's very refreshing, very rewarding. Right. That is terrific. Thank you both. I, I really, uh, I enjoy this tremendously. You're both, uh, you know, you're both very jolly people and that's, that's great. Uh, I'm going to end up here, as we often do, with a little inspirational quote about volunteering. Uh, we'll get Michael to put it up on the screen. A uh, quote from Martin Luther King, who basically says, you know, what's life about if you're not doing something that's helping other people, or in this case, helping nature, helping the your your surroundings and helping the, you know, the, the Aina that we all uh, depend on in some, you know, some way. The the plants and the animals and the locations. So with that, I want to thank you both. Uh, you've been great. 
and you know keep keep on getting out there in the sun i think that's you know whatever floats your your boat i guess <laughs> i'm not going to be volunteering that's what i'm trying to tell you but i'm very very impressed with you and cassandra with you putting this whole program together it's really terrific and you deserve all of our thanks and and congratulations and so i will say to all our my my two regular viewers uh we'll be back in a couple of weeks with some more volunteers and um if you have the slightest inspiration to uh, find out what a bellyache looks like, I suggest first Saturday morning of the month, you show up at uh, Diamond Head and you uh, pick some bellyache or contact Cassandra about being a volunteer. It is so rewarding and so important to do. Um, thank you again. And thank you to everyone who's paying attention. Aloha.